Okay, hello. Nice to meet you, Joshua. Uh, could, could you please have a brief introduction of yourself and Soul Layer, please? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm Joshua. Um, currently the head of product over at um, Soul Layer. And so they we're doing restaking on Solana. And um, yeah, I think when it comes to restaking, there's a lot of um, different kinds of ways people are doing it across different chains. And for us, we're doing it natively on Solana. And a bit of background on how we're doing it is that there are going to be what we call endogenous ABSs and then exogenous ABSs. So um, doing restaking in a sense that makes sense for Solana. Okay, so you've mentioned the concept of restaking. So could you please explain what restaking is and how is it different from traditional staking on proof of stake blockchains? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So um, restaking is where we borrow um, some in proof of stake networks. You stake up your, um, your native tokens and then use that um, to secure the network itself. In terms of um, restaking is when you use that, that stake asset and use it to secure other kinds of systems as well. So in terms of Solayer, we're not just restaking to secure other kinds of systems outside of Solayer, so Solana. We're using it to secure both um, applications on Solana as well as applications outside of Solana itself on off-chain systems. Okay, so, so Solayer raised a significant seed round led by Polychain uh, and saw rapid growth in the deposits. What are your plans to utilize these funds on Solayer? What are you going to do with these funds for the platform's growth and development? Yeah, so we have a lot of exciting features um, coming in soon. So previously, we launched the endo endogenous AVSs. We call them endo AVS. Um, and we launched with a few partners for that. Moving forward, we'll be launching a lot more interesting and more uh, product features moving into the future. Um, and just so definitely stay tuned for um, the rest of this year and the next coming weeks and months. So a lot of our effort and funding is going to go to it, developing the products for our users, iterating on that as well as marketing to kind of get as many people to hear about our product and also learn a bit more about what we staking to it looks like. Okay, so this can be a really silly question, but why did you choose the Solana to restake on? Yeah, and, and there are no silly questions, okay. but um, I think for Solana, the reason why we chose Solana, number one, um, one of the fastest growing ecosystems out there. The layer one itself, Solana is very performant. And also because there are also a lot of primitives in Solana that are going to be very favorable to us building a restaking protocol. So um, what I was mentioning a bit earlier about endogenous and exogenous AVSs, um, endogenous, or what we call endo AVSs, allows us to secure block space and accelerate transactions. The reason why is because this new primitive on Solana or um, stake weight quality of service. That is where the more, simply put, the more stake you have, the higher chance you have to get transactions accelerated or prioritized through Solana's um, native mechanism. So um, that allows us to really leverage Solana's infrastructure to secure applications directly on Solana itself. And also because there's a really good um, ecosystem of validators as well as dApps on Solana itself that allows us to really build an ecosystem around restaking on the layer itself, Solana, as well as off-chain um, on integrated systems and modular systems on Solana. Okay, so could you elaborate on partnerships with Bonk, Sonic SVN, uh, and Hashkey Cloud for Soul Layers make at launch? What role do these partnerships play? In? Yeah, so um, those four um, partners that we've launched so far, um, that was part of our mainnet launch that happened just two weeks ago. And um, those four are part of what we call en endo ABSs. So for those four partners, um, how it would look like is that when users restake Solana to get Soleil or SO, what we can do is that we um, allow users to delegate um, that SO to each of these endo ABSs. That delegation means that um, we will be able to prioritize transactions for them because now we have more stake that's dedicated towards them. So using the stake weighted quality of service mechanism I was sharing about a bit earlier. So that's the main partnership we have um, with these four main players. So in terms of um, Sonic, Sonic's one of the um, leading kind of layer two gaming networks on, on Solana. And we'll be helping secure like, their, their native um, transactions on Solana. And then for Hashkey, um, Hashkey Cloud, Bong, Outlayer, similarly, we'll be accelerating all of their transactions on, um, on Solana. 
And then moving forward into the future, we'll be launching uh, more of the exogenous side to help um, secure our uh, modular systems as well as well. Okay, so Iron Layer has been a very successful model on Ethereum for restricting. So how does the layer aim to replicate or differ from Eigenlayer's solution on Solana? Yeah, so I think Eigenlayer's, Eigenlayer has several things that we are differentiating from. So the first, first of all, with Endo AVS, we are, uh, we are not just securing like modular and off-chain systems, like your layer 2s, roll-ups, oracles, bridges. Um, for us, we are going to cover that as well, but we're going to be starting first with Endo AVSs. So securing network throughput and network resources, reserving it for our applications and dApps that build on Solana. So that's definitely the first, um, the first kind of uh, the first difference. Secondly, I feel that um, restaking on Solana needs to focus a lot more on um, additional kind of utility for, for the yield that we have. So for us, we have, um, number one, we have the native restaking um, like on the validation group. We also have um, MEV, um, KPAC, and Solar, as well as like, in inside the programs, and delegating to the Endo AVSs on our platform. Um, when, and especially for those Endo AVSs, you get back an AVS token, which you can oh. use to secure other kinds of um, exogenous AVSs down in the future. Um, and definitely more information on that coming out in, in the coming um, weeks. But um, I think some of the other things that separate us from Eigenlayer, um, the slashing mechanisms, we're going to be a lot more careful about slashing mechanisms. And in terms of ABSs, we were bringing on board a lot more revenue producing, a lot more demand. Plus, the ABSs are mostly on the demand side when it comes to the um, restaking world. So we're going to look towards bringing about more revenue generating um, ABSs that are able to pay um, and provide for those services. Um, other than that, I think looking at more of a fundamental shift, I think beyond economic security, um, we want to back things, uh, back restaking with a lot more utility. That's why we looked into things like stick with it for your service um, and, and other kinds of utility as well. So that um, restaking is going to be built on very fundamentally strong like foundations so that your yield, everything is going to be um, very much on, str on a stronger basis. So not, not purely on economic security. Oh, okay. So with Solana's restaking era just begun, uh, what do you see the biggest opportunities and challenges for the Sol layer? And like in the next year or year and a half, what's your biggest challenge? Yeah, so I guess some of the things that we are looking to kind of like overcome in the next couple months and years is I think number one, restaking is very much a new frontier. So we want to make sure that when we're building, um, we're building very strong foundations that is also flexible. So how we can make it a lot more flexible and extendable way into the future. So that's where we need to be very careful um, with what we're building. Um, and we've been doing so um, so far, primarily so that you can have more interesting integrations down the road that no one has explored before. So in our case, like integrating both our endogenous, our endo and exo ABSs, how do those two systems play together? Um, as well as what kind of new ABSs people can build on us? What kind of new LRTs that people can build on us? Is it maybe leveraged um, uh, LRT providers or is it more on rebalancing insurance funds. I think there's a lot of new interesting use cases. Um, and the challenge is to both allow for flexibility, but also allow for a structured approach and fundamental things that we feel that the protocol should cover, like slashing, being able to make sure that for our users, we can tell them that your, your funds are safe and it's not, you might take a hit if you are slashed, but you're not going to go to zero, right? I think that's yeah. a very important thing especially in um, some of the other restaking protocols that is not really addressed yet. And we want to address things like that. So we have a bit of a second movers advantage with um, we see some of the major restaking protocols that are out there. But it also means that we can learn from a lot of the things and build it right from the ground up this time. So I think one of the strengths for Solayer is that we are native restaking built from the ground up. Yes. So it's less of converting different kinds of systems to be more. We are built and customized everything from the ground up which means we can customize and build it specifically features that will help restaking users and users who are coming in with the expectation of what can I do with restaking, right? So having stronger fundamentals of that. Right? Okay, so it's like the back to the basic question. What does, what do you think restaking will bring to the blockchain industry and the whole 
I think um, we staking will bring a lot more use, more utility when it comes to staking. So we first explore this as the industry when it comes to LSC. So where we found that, hey, we can take issue back a token and use that in DeFi, right? That's the first iteration. I think when we come out with um, restaking, I think what opens up a lot of doors is for companies like Solair to become more of like the decentralized cloud because now we can share resources um, and become a bit more modular in that sense where anyone can bootstrap their own um, application and use it on a more pay-as-you-go model, right? Where smaller applications that don't need that many many resources, they'll be able to kind of take a smaller, maybe five nodes or fewer kind of resources, maybe elastic, and then pay as they grow and scale together with us, which is mirrors a bit more of what you see in the Web2 world, where you see AWS can spin up more containers and scale it that way. Very similarly, you can kind of scale the economic security that you need. But at the same time, if you're a new project starting up, and you can't find the resources to boost your entire um, layer from scratch, that's where you can actually learn to kind of grow with us as well and leverage the shared liquidity that's from us um, from across all of our different APSs, which is what SO, also layer SO is meant to do, which is um, number one, being a liquid token that people can use across DeFi, but also more importantly, being that shared liquidity layer across all of our APSs on SO layer. So whether you're a small ABS or a big ABS, you will be able to enjoy the benefits of faster transactions, economic security, and all sorts of other use cases that people will be exploring in the future. Okay, so, so like I, I really know that Solana is a very decent project, but some people doubt that Solana is not enough like decentralized or it's not enough secure. What are your thoughts about like compared to Ethereum? Yeah, I think there's a lot of debate surrounding that. But I feel that for Solana, it is, we have over a thousand nodes. I think it's definitely decentralized in that sense. Um, and in terms of the, if you look at the distribution of stake across different kind of databases, we are moving in a very positive trend. And I think in the future, as we improve the network scalability, the important thing is that we're looking at the, measuring this in years and even decades, where how do we build infrastructure that they can scale and also have room for decentralization in the future. I think Solana fits that bill and being one of the best players in the ecosystem, I think Solana is uniquely positioned to be both scalable based on hardware. So the, the better your hardware is, the faster our chain would go. I think that's, in a way, we are on the side of Moore's law so that we would, our uh, network will be able to scale together with the times and high technology progresses instead of continuously having to kind of rethink how things are being done. That is one of the major advantages. And then there's also, um, we would we are seeing a lot more client diversity as well. So not, it used to be just that we had one client on Solana for the validator clients. Now we're seeing a lot more coming out. We have Anza with the Agave client. We have um, Gino's client. We have the Solana original Solana Labs client. And then SIG, I think they're also coming up with um, additional ones. And I think there will be a lot more new kind of clients and that will contribute definitely to the fault tolerance as well as the diversity. And I think for us, we are definitely interested in contributing to that, um, that um, diversity and also contributing to Solana's foreign infrastructure. So I think for Solair, our role in that ecosystem, we see ourselves as we are a restaking protocol first and foremost, but we are also a core Solana infrastructure company and we're solving like transaction speed, transaction um, throughput. We're solving these issues using restaking as well. So it positions us in a way that we're also able to contribute to helping to decentralize and secure Solana, as well as provide for more interesting use cases in the future. So to, to address both, both, both sides of the equation. True, true. Yeah. So what does the Korean market mean to Solaya? What's your expectations about joining the KB token? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, we definitely, we are, we are focused on the both Asia as well as um, the global community as well. So I think, um, I'm, so I'm, if I'm leading product, I look at all the internal metrics, where our stake is coming from, things like that. And Korea is definitely a very good, great, great partner for, for our ecosystem. And we see a lot of contributions coming in from that side. So yeah, 100% the target market for us. And we'll be looking to kind of exploring more growth opportunities, partnerships with the ecosystem, as well as how can we better engage the community here in Korea, both from a retail institutional as well as project uh, ecosystem point of view. So um, definitely, if you're looking to launch an ABS, build LRTs, um, maybe partner with us on the infrastructure side, 
provide stake, even contribute content if you're you looking to do research and so they are always open to kind of collaborate. And I think it's always a community push together. Um, and we're happy to have everyone along with us on this year. Yeah, so this will be the last question. Is there any question you would like to ask, answer? Uh, just to answer, I'll do it again. Lastly, is there any question you would like to answer? Uh, uh, any question that you would like to think about any question? Yeah. I think um, some of the questions would be maybe in terms of like our roadmap and in terms of our roadmap and like how, how to get involved. Yeah, your roadmap. I think um, when it comes to our roadmap and how to get involved, definitely stay tuned. Um, one of our best places is on Twitter. Uh, follow us there as well as our website. Um, that's where all official channels are. So um, remember always to follow us on our official channels and stay tuned for roadmap guidance. Um, there's always we always try to kind of like give people a heads up in our internal community. So join our Discord, our Telegram, and um, that's where you primarily see a lot of the other things that are going on. Um, and beyond that, like I think um, in terms of restaking, uh, we're always looking for restaking partners. And yeah, in terms of delegations as well, we'll always continue to add more and do ABSs um, as well as exhaustion of ABS down the road to our, our website. So definitely go check that out. And um, we'll be releasing a lot more information in the coming weeks regarding our, our roadmap and major launches that are coming up. Okay, that was all for our interview today yeah. with Solair. And thank you, Joshua, for coming for our interview yeah. booth. Okay. It was very a perfect you. interview. And thank you. Thank you.